Like many others, I live in a crowded place with more neighbors than space around the house. While this is a good thing for a quality life, it is less than satisfactory for a ham radio operator. There are mainly two solutions to this dilemma. A divorce with a move to a remote location or a remote station. Because I love my wife, a remote station is a proper solution. Today we will cover one of the most critical topics of such a project. Connect the flex radio at the remote station to our shack PC at home. Fortunately, we can use the same technology to connect securely to our home network from everywhere without the hassle of OpenVPN or WireGuard. Secure, simple and free of charge. So this knowledge is valid for most of us. Hello wireless enthusiasts. Here is the channel with the strange Swiss distortion in the signal with a new video around wireless and other exciting stuff. Remember to subscribe if you do not want to miss the following emissions. While many possibilities like OpenVPN or WireGuard exist, these possibilities do not properly work for remote locations, for sure not with a flex radio. They also need a public IP address or a DIN DNS service and port forwarding. Not easy to install. We will use Zeroed here, a new class of VPN software to avoid this hassle. Let's start with a simple scenario. We want to connect our smartphone and laptop to the home server running Home Assistant via a VPN. As a first step, we must create a free account on zerotier.com. Then we are asked to create a new network. It automatically gets a name, but we will call it Home and we want to be it a private network where we can select who we want to connect. If your network were public, everybody could connect to it. Next we choose one of the proposed IP address ranges. That's it. We created our private and encrypted network that spans the whole internet. Its ID is here. Now we can start to add nodes. The first I add is my laptop because I want to securely connect it to my home network. For that I have to install the zero tier client on my laptop and start it. The laptop got an address and we can connect to our freshly made network by entering its ID. Returning to our management console, we see that one device wants to join. If we check this box, our laptop is connected. To connect to my home assistant server is also a piece of cake. We search the zero tier add-on and install it. Before we start, we have to enter our network ID. I had to add it in a YAML file, but I assume it should be possible to add it here. After the start, your server appears in the zero tier console and we can accept it as we did before with our laptop. Just a tip. Never delete a device. I did it and was no more able to recreate it. I had to create a new network to solve the issue. So better hide it if you do not need it anymore. The iPhone is connected the same way by installing the Zero Tier app. Now you can securely check your home automation from the McDonald's Wi-Fi. The newly created VPN assigned these addresses and shows the physical addresses of the devices. You see my Surface and the iPhone have different IP addresses than my home network. Because I wanted to simulate an on the road situation, I tethered my Surface via my iPhone. Can I connect to my home assistant with this address? Yes, I can. Cool, it works without DIN DNS and port forwarding. We could add as many devices as we wanted. 25 nodes are free of charge. You can stop the video now if you only wanted to connect your home network. All others can join the challenging ride until the remote network, including a cellular router and a beefy 4G antenna, is placed at the remote location to connect to the flex radio. What is the next problem to solve? We need a cellular router. I choose the industrial cellular router RootX14 from Teltonica because one of my colleagues recommended this brand. The RootX14 supports CAT12, 
which means 600 megabits per second download and 150 megabits upload speed. And therefore probably is an overkill for this application. But Teltonica was so kind to sponsor this device for my tests. And they did much more for the success, as we will later see. I choose 4G because for the moment I did not want to depend on 5G. Because of political reasons, its rollout is not as fast as we would like. But before we drive to the remote station, I want to be sure that my flex radio works across a mobile connection. So first we have to connect the router to the mobile network. This is easy. Just buy a SIM card and insert it. After boot, these RG45 connectors are connected to the internet. So if you just need an internet connection without VPN for your camper, for example, you are done. And because the root X14 offers a Wi-Fi access point, you can connect all your gadgets via Wi-Fi and enjoy fast internet via 4G. For our remote station, we need more. We must create a new zero tier network called remote station with our shack PC and the flex radio. Connecting the Shack PC is simple. Just install the zero tier client and connect it to the ID of the remote station network. But what about the flex radio? We cannot install a zero tier client to connect it to our network. So was the whole idea with zero tier not good? Fortunately not. Teltonica included a zero tier client in their router. Because the root X14 also offers a WireGuard client and I did not know of zero tier, I tried it and failed miserably. Because there are not enough IP version 4 addresses, mobile operators use tricks to connect millions of smartphones to the internet without assigning a public IP address to all of them. They use carrier grade NUT. That, as you can read here, blocks all sorts of port forwarding with the effect that usual methods like OpenVPN and WireGuard often do not work. Zero tier is a different weapon. It can conquer even CGNAT. What a relief! The only thing you have to do is to install a client on every node and accept it into your network. Let's continue with our project. Unfortunately, we forgot something. Do you spot the problem? Yes, you're right. As we learned before, the flex radio is no PC and we cannot install a zero tier client. Not good. What to do? We have to ignite stage two. Instead of only connecting our router to zero tier, we connect the whole network behind it. We add an address range and tell zero tier that this network can be reached via the root X14. With this trick, all devices on the remote LAN are connected to my Shack PC. Now we can ping the Flex and it answers. Incredible! We could also connect a Raspberry Pi or an ESP32 to the remote network. And they would behave like they were in our Shack. Let's check if the Flex radio works. The radio already runs and we were able to ping it. So smart SDR should auto discover the radio and start to display lovely waterfalls. But no, nothing happens. Not as expected. I tried and tried, but without success. In my misery, I called Thomas from Teltonica for help. And because he is a viewer of my channel, he helped me instead of having lunch. I already knew that Flex Radio uses the Vita 49 protocol for discovery and Vita49 uses the data link layer in addition to the network layer. Fortunately, Zero Tier offers to bridge also the data link layer to our remote network. Just tick Allow Ethernet Bridging. Unfortunately, this is still not sufficient. After much digging and head scratching, one of Teltonica's support engineers found the solution. Somehow, he created two subsegments and bridged them. It is too complex for me to understand, but it is easy to build once you have the blueprint. This is why I leave a link to a document where you see all the needed settings. If you stick with the same network numbers, it should work in less than half an hour. If I start Smart SDR now, it immediately discovers the radio connected via the mobile network and the root x14. 
Now we can drive to the remote site to test our connectivity. You see this little house is remote and no neighbors are around. And you see that we can profit from the antennas already in place. Now we have to do tests to find out if our dream becomes true. The router has four antennas because modern cellular systems use horizontal and vertical polarized signals to increase speed. We first used the out-of-the-box setup with the four antennas. Unfortunately, the signal was poor and the up and down load speed was only a few megabit per second. Not what we had hoped. We would not be hams if we would not find a solution to that problem. As usual, we need a bigger antenna. Teltonica sells an outdoor antenna with four connectors. The antenna is perfect for mounting on the roof of a camper. We mounted the antenna outside, but it was not a big help because it is omnidirectional. So we had to shift gears. And this is what we got a few days later. These two directional antennas, one for horizontal and one for vertical polarization. I connected one cable to the main and one to the aux connectors. And now we started to point toward the different cellular towers. We discovered three significant variables. The first was the company we bought the SIM card from, because not all had usable towers in our area. The next was the signal strength, which is heavily influenced by the propagation and distance to the next tower. The third was the utilization of the tower, because the tower's capacity is shared with all its users. A high performance tower in a crowded area sometimes deliver a lower speed than a slower one in a remote location because we have to share with fewer people. Of course, the usage of such towers fluctuates a lot and we have to monitor the performance over time and maybe adapt our choice. We found the best upload speed at towers in the 3 to 5 km range. Not close, but we got a good signal with a direct line of sight and directional antennas. The speed test of the router shows upload speeds of around 25 megabit per second. We do not know how much speed we need for a decent user experience with the flex radio, but I read that much lower speed should work. After mounting the antennas, we connected my flex radio to our new setup. And really, it works. Perfect. We will continue with a permanent installation and add a kill switch for the radio, because it is required by law. So we were able to create a VPN to safely access our home server without any hassle by using zero tier. We were able to connect a Teltonica Route X14 4G cellular router to our zero tier network, conquering CGNAT of our mobile carrier. Connected a whole remote network segment to the network bridged the data link layer to make the flex radio work on the remote location. And finally, with the help of two logarithmic periodic antennas, we got a decent 4G signal to our remote station. This is all for today. As always, you find all the relevant links in the description. 73 to everybody, and please consider supporting the channel by using the links in the description. See you in the next episode.